When I was 17, I had my daughter Ria. This wasn't the plan, but for me, it was such a magical time. Those first two weeks after any mother gives birth create this beautiful and surreal bubble of loving visits from family and friends, gorgeous gifts, and constant congratulations. However, for me, reality quickly burst that bubble. My reality, and the reality for many young mums, is not the fairy tale that we envisaged when we held our babies for the first time. Reality is far more brutal and unforgiving. Becoming a young mum defines everything about you. That is all society sees, another statistic adding to the UK's position of having one of the highest teen pregnancy rates in Europe. We're seen as parasites, stealing taxpayers' money whilst making no substantial contribution to society. And this stereotype is weaved into our everyday lives through characters like Vicky Pollard in Little Britain. While the media prescribes us the perfect mother. The perfect mother has their first child, once married and accomplished in their profession. The perfect mother is also a homeowner, but most importantly, the perfect mother is in their late 20s to mid 30s. As an unmarried, unemployed, 17 year old, living with their own mother, I knew that I could never fit into the dainty shoes of society's perfect mum. But wow, was I not allowed to forget it. I've had so many first-hand experiences of the negative impact that such stigma and discrimination can induce for myself and for other young mothers like me. It's relentless. It comes from across society. And for me, it began the moment that I shared I was pregnant. My granny had to break the news to her generation of relatives. My mum had to endure the constant, if she was my daughter, I probably would have. And my friends felt that they had to defend me when people they knew made pretty definitive judgments about my choice to become a mother. While I had to work out how I was going to navigate adolescent life as well as motherhood. Granted, it would have been much easier to manage without the added pressure of worrying about what other people thought of me. Sadly, those concerns were justified. I remember visiting the health visitor for my daughter's two-year checkup and her saying, you're different than what I expected when I saw your age. I remember the clicky middle-class parents at my daughter's nursery who would turn their backs as we approached in the mornings. And in fact, it meant that I began to censor my own behaviours. I never wore hoop earrings to pick Rhea up from nursery. I avoided being on the phone when out in public with Rhea, and then I avoided public transport altogether, and I drove everywhere. And I did all of this purely because I wanted to avoid ever becoming the stereotypical young mother. I wouldn't take my daughter to places that I knew older mothers would be, unless I had someone with me for support. And I know it sounds ridiculous to say out loud, but imagine you're a young mother and your child is teething, has colic, or is just unsettled. These are reasons enough to make some babies scream hysterically for hours, and mine was one of those. Do you risk going on an outing and leaving yourself open to the dirty looks, tethered to the assumption that your child's constant crying is because they lead an unhappy or neglectful life? Or do you just stay home and avoid having to face the unavoidable wrath of public opinion? That's exactly what one of my closest friends did. Although she was in her early to mid-twenties when she had her son, so not a particularly young mother, she had the audacity to look young. <laughs> and it was one mother and baby group that put her off taking her son out alone for the first three years of his life. All the other mothers were much older than her, and not one attempted to acknowledge or include her. This one incident meant that my friend was so uncomfortable in public settings with her son because she was worried that any mistake she made would support the view of her as an inadequate young mother. But we know that feedback and learning from mistakes are fundamental to progressing in any area of life, particularly motherhood. 
So why do we continue to validate the pressures felt by all mothers to be unattainably perfect through our own representation of mothers? Baby Dove carried out a survey recently and they found that nine out of 10 women felt this pressure to be perfect. Um, and that this pressure came solely from the media and social media images being shared across our society. This then gives way for women to judge other women based on their likeness to these perfect images of motherhood. Whether it's intentional or not, it is happening. No one gets anything right all of the time, but somehow society expects mothers to be consistently perfect. And then as young mothers, we feel this added pressure to be even more perfect because so many people believe that, well, actually, you got it wrong by allowing yourself to become a young mother in the first place. So we're constantly making up to try and combat this negative stigma. Why do we accept that it's okay for two children to start school with such different prospects purely due to the age of their parents? I'm one of the lucky ones. I had the best mother and an amazing support network made of the most loyal family and friends. They didn't just allow me the space to grow. They pushed me into it head first. They believed in me as a woman and as a mother. And gradually that belief resonated with me. When my daughter was 11 months old, I went back to college and completed my A-levels. I then went on to university to study a primary education degree and came out with a first. In June this year, I was awarded London's newly qualified teacher of the year. And in October, I began studying for my master's degree. <laughs> with each step that I have taken, my confidence has grown. And now I am sure of myself as a woman and as a mother although my achievements still manage to shock, as I constantly get the, wait, you're only 24, but your daughter's seven, so you had, and I can see the mental calculations going on. <laughs> yep, I had her at seven, oh, I had her at seven, I had her at 17. <laughs> wow, you've actually done so well for yourself. These terrible expectations create the glass ceiling for young mothers. It seems absurd that in a society where we are so aware of the ramifications of discrimination and prejudice that we are still allowing it to affect the next generation. Because it's pretty self-explanatory that if young mums do not feel confident enough to take their children out and offer them the experiences that go are going to enrich them as people and as citizens, then those children will always be at a disadvantage. Because our media-driven society rejected me as a mother, it normalizes and makes it okay for other women in society to treat me as a less worthy woman. Other women didn't need to stand up for me on the train when I was pregnant. They didn't need to help me up the stairs with my pushchair. And these prejudices are experienced by so many young mothers. We represent just a fraction of the greater prejudices experienced by other mothers and all women. Because let's face it, as women in society, all of our choices are cross-examined and critiqued. Don't be a young mother. Don't be an old mother. Don't be a mother with too many kids. Don't be the mother of an only child. Don't be a mother that doesn't work at all. Don't be a mother that works too much. Don't be a mother with no time for themselves. But do make sure that at some point you become a mother because otherwise you become one of society's defective women. To put it plainly, any choice made by any woman regarding motherhood is doomed. <laughs> when we judge young mothers, we're feeding a patriarchal narrative that not only has a direct impact on the lives of those young mothers and their children, but also adds to the oppression of other mothers and ultimately of every single woman. I want to debunk the myth of the bad or lesser than teenage mother. Stop presuming that age determines capability to parent. 
It's a misconception that, mo that young mothers have bad outcomes purely due to their age. I propose that it's society's entrenched expectations that have been shaping the views of young and all mothers for as long as we can remember. The only way that I managed to change the narrative was by ignoring the, ignoring the voices that told me I was an inadequate mother, stopping the self-judgment. I am a good mother, and I will continue to be. Thank you. Thank you.